as a matter of fact, there was a tendency for a certain amount of militarism and warlordism uh, down at the local level. Uh, and uh, there was an attempt also as uh, these local, enti uh, local communities became more commercialized, there was a tendency really to adopt uh, uh, what, you know, what the economists now call rent-seeking uh, from the national elite, that they were, you know, these were the incomes of privilege rather than, than function, ra rather than function. And uh, uh, so from the outset of the American rule, the colonial bureaucracy managed to maintain its influence until the Commonwealth period of the 1930s. Uh, and eventually you had, you had warlordism at the local levels, uh, there were local private armies built after World War II. Proliferation of arms around, allowed the rise of provincial politicians known as warlords. And uh, local elites formed these private armies to defend their extraction of natural resources through logging, mining, or fishing, the basis of wealth in many of these communities. So although the previous revolutionary governments provided for federal rather than a unitary system, uh, for example, the Katipunan government uh, proclaimed by Andres Bonifacio in uh, 1896 uh, established a federal system of provincial and town councils. The Malolos Republic launched uh, uh, in 1998, established a federal system. Uh, and uh, uh, despite the fact that American colonists, uh, were colonialists were federalists, and this was uh, President uh, the the uh, uh, President McKinley's instructions in the distribution of powers among the governments is organized by the Commission. The presumption is always to be in favor of the smaller subdivision so that all the powers which can properly be exercised by the municipal government shall be vested in that government. Almost a principle of subsidiarity from President McKinley. Uh, so it's, it's, it's strange support uh, 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 for our for our meeting today. Uh, in the Organic Act of 1902, Section 66 even empowered the, uh, the national government by appropriate legislation to authorize municipal governments to float municipal bonds. This was not embodied in legislation. In, in, in the Philippines until 1991 with the, for the purpose of providing funds to construct uh, infrastructure facilities, uh, uh, principally water, water at that time. And, uh, and uh, there was, in the 1935 local, when they instituted the Commonwealth, the, the Commonwealth Constitution, uh, there was already some advocacy for local autonomy. Uh, Delegate Jose Reyes from Sorsogon criticizes the draft of the Constitution for the absence of any provision increasing the autonomy of our municipalities and provinces, notwithstanding the fact that William McKinley gave local autonomy a most prominent place in his instructions. Um, and you say, well, where did all this come from then? It was from the national elite. The national elite did not want to see uh, uh, you know, local authority given any more, any more force than it already had. They felt that in order to begin to unify the country, then there had to be a very, very strong central government. And uh, at the time in the in the Constitutional Convention, Manuel Rojas gave uh, this is no relation. This is the grandfather of Mar gave the rationale for local autonomy. Uh, in a unitary country, a country that has to deal with small political sovereignty, a country like ours, he said, constituted by a people expressing a whole, and one sovereignty with a community of interest, the system generally is a unitary as opposed to a federal system. One government in a federated small nationality, but one nation to govern and exercise jointly over all authority. The political subdivisions are creatures of the constitution, so all power is concentrated in the national government and brought and what is except what is delegated downwards. So the reserve power is with the central government and what is not delegated downwards remains with the central government, the very opposite of the concept of either subsidiarity or federalism. Um, so that's how 
1973, well, first in the 1935, and then later in the 1973 and 1987 constitutions. Uh, 1935 carried over to the 1946 constitution, and then 1973 and the 1987 constitution embodied, continued to embody the centralist ideology. Um, however, both in the 73 and 87 constitutions, there were already marked movements towards strengthening local autonomy, but the direction was more decentralization than federalization. So decentralization is really delegating downwards rather than reserve power being the principle of subsidiarity all the reserve power, what is not delegated upwards, reserve, uh, remains with the local, with the local. So all power is with the local, and what is not delegated upwards remains with the local. But decentralization is the very opposite. All power is concentrated in the national, what is not delegated downwards uh, remains with the national. So that was uh, embodied. Uh, but, and this is very, very significant. The Constitution of 1973 already had this language. The state shall guarantee and promote the autonomy of local government units. So autonomy of local government units, especially the barrio, to ensure their fullest development as self-reliant communities. So for the first time, this was embodied in our jurisprudence. The concept of self-reliant local communities. Uh, section 25 of the Art Article 2 of the Constitution of 1987, the state shall ensure the autonomy of local governments. It did not embody, carry over to the uh, language, the language of the Constitution of 73, self-reliant uh, local communities. That, however, was restored in the Local Government Code of 19, uh, 1991. In other words, the 1991 Local Government Code uh, in its declaration of policy uh, said that it is declared the policy of the state that the territorial and political subdivisions of the state shall enjoy genuine and meaningful local autonomy to enable them to attain their fullest development as self-reliant local communities, self-reliant communities. So that is embodied in the jurisprudence in the local government code. Uh, and um, all right, so uh, our task now is really how do we build on the provisions already contained in our present statutes, so that we don't fool, we don't we don't. In other words, there are two reasons why I'm emphasizing that. One is we don't need to wait for new legislation to get the process started. Second, even whether or not there's legislation, the process is more important than the product. You know, this country is, uh, is famous for passing a lot of laws and ignoring the process of carrying them out because very often the law ha gains substance only if the culture and the values and the will begins to embody the process. So the value has to be embraced, has to be internalized, and has to be set in motion even before the, legisl before the legislation is changed. So uh, the process of uh, subsidiarity has to become a process indeed before it, you know, it, before it can be realized. Um, and this process has become much more important in this millennium. The QA is, uh, you know, Father Murray's uh, quadragesimo ano uh, reference. In the 73 years since then, the concept has become even more appropriate and, uh, and applicable. And particularly after the financial crisis uh, of, uh, of November last year, I think more and more emphasis has been given to local economic development. I mean, there, there's a de-emphasis on globalization. Uh, there's a de-emphasis on the on, on, on enterprise. There's a greater emphasis now on turning inwards and building up the local the local communities and their self-reliance. So uh, there is a much better understanding of that of the process. 
back then.